Okay, so this week we are introducing the concept of point of sale, or what's known as POS. And so we're going to jump into a little lecture here and really break this down and start to really look at what POS means. And I will say right off the bat that POS is a term that gets thrown around very loosely. It can also refer to the software that tracks customers at the point of purchase. So just know that going in, that in the beverage industry, that term is a little loosey-goosey, if you will. So we are um, looking at it now from the point of display pieces. So know that. Okay, so what is point of sale? So point of sale is really the the extras that make a display look really impactful. So this is particularly relevant for your off-premise sales. So last week, for example, we started looking at Barefoot, uh, Barefoot Winery, and we made note that they were really looking at off-premise sales to really start their, their winery and really give them some momentum with sales. They really went into their endeavor as a winery with velocity sales in mind, they wanted the high turnover that was really coming from the, the grocery industry. So how that comes about is from these impact, visually impactful displays that you find within grocery stores. And even going back to a prior module, we really identified that there is this role within the distributorships that is known as merchandising. And this really this particular role emerged from the need for people to really be able to build these uh, visually impactful displays. So it's a little introduction there. I do have some text here that I'm going to go over with you before we move to the next slide. So it says a point of sale display is a specialized form of sales promotion that is found near or next to the checkout counter, i.e. the point of the sale. They're intended to draw customers' attention to products that are new, on sale, or limited promotion. POS displays are also used to promote special events, seasonal, or holiday uh, time sales. So that's, that's our uh, textbook definition right here. And really what we're looking at is all these little extras. So we have cards that slip in the back of these case displays. Case cards is what these are called. Um, we also have displays that look like this. So this is a really impactful uh, beer display here. You can see they have a mantle, they're hanging stockings. They've just added these little extra touches to make this display uh, holiday specific and relevant and give it a lot of visual appeal as the customer is walking by. So uh, POS displays really come in a lot of different shapes and sizes and themes and they're People get incredibly creative with this. So here's just some standard uh, POS racks or wine racks that we're gonna look at. Um, so you can see these are just different ways of displaying the label prominently and also housing a good amount of, of um, quantity too. Ideally, these types of displays are going to hold three to four plus cases because at the end of the day, we really are just trying to get movement off, off of these types of displays, so we don't want to be continuously refilling them. So that's why they are built to to house uh, a couple, at least a couple cases worth. And one thing I will notice is the branding that you see. This um, is what I'm kind of looking at right here with my, my mouse. So these are typically embossed and heavily logoed. And the reason being is, and we'll get into this in, in greater depth as we move through this lecture, when it comes to Tide House laws, this is where things start to get a little gray. And again, we'll get into this a little bit more as we move through these um, as we move through these slides, but just know that uh, these are all branded with the winery's name on it. We don't have the distributor's name on it because that would be that would potentially violate some tide house laws. And also another thing here is that when the winery's name is on it, Let's, let's just say this, this display really sells all the way down. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's just say that this, this rack is empty. They've sold all of the product off of it. It's just sitting in a grocery store. There is a tendency for grocery stores to grab this rack and put another product on it that has virtually nothing to do with wine, but just utilize it as a display piece for anything, really anything they want to sell at the store. So to really combat that, they really brand it heavily so that it is obvious that this is a wine display piece and that really tends to act as a deterrent for this, these particular particular types of, um, of displays to be utilized in another capacity. 
So now we're just looking at a floor display without POS. And you see this quite a bit too, but you see this is just a bunch of stacked cases. There's no additional visual appeal added here. This literally is just, uh, yeah, just cases of wine. And this one in particular, you can really see the concept of velocity sales is at play. So you can see this, this uh, display here probably houses upwards of um, probably 48 cases of wine, I would say. Uh, so one thing to know is that a standard case holds 12 bottles. And so whenever you have, uh, you know, three cases stacked on top of each other, going three across and then going up to four cases, five cases, and then down the backside, you can you can count here and, and just easily see you have about 48 cases of wine. And then just remembering that um, sales reps are, are typically paid a straight salary and then they can earn commission on top of that for case sales. So when you are, when you are selling product at, at this level of, um, well, velocity is the word we, we keep coming back to, this is generating a lot in the way of commission for the sales rep, which again was one of the um, highlights that we pinpointed in last week's module. Last thing I'm going to point out before I move to the next slide here is in terms of building these types of displays, uh, sales reps need to be very mindful of the price point here. Because you are going for an impulse buy, we like to stay within the range of what we call the magic price point. And that is different for every demographic. But typically in grocery stores, what you see is, you know, $10 and under is a very comfortable price to put, um, to, to build a display around. When it's $10 and under, you're able to move it quicker, deplete the, the display a little bit faster. And uh, again, just higher turnaround, all, all higher turnover all the way around. So the price point is going to be a big determining factor in, in whether or not these, these displays are, are um, whether or not a store chooses to put up these displays. Okay, now we're going to take a look at displays that actually are using this branded um, material, this POS material, in a more creative fashion. So this is a display by Cupcake Winery that is using uh, some really specific POS that has been provided by the winery to make this a more visually impactful display. And it actually looks like you probably have a sales rep here who provided some sort of blue fabric to, to swag across the back of this display to give it a little more dimension. And you, you do see that. You do see that a lot of times the more successful sales reps, really what they do is they take the extra step to really zhuzh up the display for lack of better of a better term here. So yeah, the more successful sales reps are, are the ones who actually take the time in their schedule to locate some additional material to really kind of make these displays pop. So again, knowing that your sales reps are making uh, making a bonus on case sales, these these types of displays, this is where this is where um, wine, uh, distributor sales reps make their money. So again, we have these little cupcakes hanging from the ceiling, um, really just kind of getting creative, even just the fact that they're kind of um, alternating the way that the, the case stacks are aligned to give it a little bit more dimension here. And we'll talk about these little, uh, these little pieces right here as we move through our slides. These little, we call them shelf talkers. Uh, these are these are actually just wine descriptors taped to a chopstick and shoved in the, the tray there of that case stack. So just taking a look at that. Uh, here's another example of a wine display that has been heavily merchandised. Uh, you can see there is a display piece in the background. It's got a little bit of a chalkboard there. Again, th these are all things that are provided by the winery, given to the distributor so that the dis distributor can then pass it along to the retail establishment to create a more visually impactful display. Again, we have these little shelf talkers here that are uh, just adding a little bit more interest to this display and, and hopefully making it a little bit more appealing to the consumer, again, in hopes of an impulse purchase. Here we have a very large, high impact display. This is probably close to 60 to 70 cases of wine on display here. Uh, this is known as the end cap display. Some of you might already be familiar with that term. We've all seen these. Um, it's referred to as an end cap display just simply because it is on the end of an aisle in a grocery store. Uh, again, we're noticing price point is consistent here. We have $7.99, $7.99, $7.99. This is a Hogue display. Hogue is actually a Washington winery. So this is 
Uh, this is a local winery here being displayed. And again, you have this big uh, piece back here. Looks like it was potentially made to either be made from or mimic the look of wine barrel staves. Um, you've, you've got some uh, accolades that, that are on the back of that uh, framed image right there. So, and again, you have this kind of swag of fabric across the back here. So huge display. Uh, really a, a lot of cases here and again keeping that price point under ten dollars which is uh, a little bit more of a comfortable price point for people to make that in, impulse purchase okay so now we're moving into holiday displays again we've all seen these things right like even you're out in a grocery store you you see these but now we're looking at them from the perspective of of wine distribution so we're looking at how these are themed. You're, you're taking note here that when you are a sales rep, because again, this, this particular class has a very strong element of, of um, job exploration embedded in our objectives here. So with that in mind, when you are looking at these types of displays from the position of an off-premise sales rep, you're realizing that you are always thinking two to three, four months ahead and you are pitching your buyer as a sales rep, you are, you are actively trying to sell your buyer on the idea of building these type of themed holiday displays uh, in, in as far in advance as you can to secure the most, uh, the, the more prime areas in the store and to create the displays that have the most visual appeal. So again, here, this is a holiday display playing off of a Christmas story. You've got the leg lamp, famous leg lamp. Um, price point is consistent. Halloween display here, you see they've taken a little extra step there to get some um, fake cobwebbing on it, consistent price points. This one, I would say, I don't know how shoppable this is. It does look like it creates a little bit of a corridor there and someone would have to really walk into it to get that display. I'd be curious to see how effective that is. Um, and then you have a spring display over here. This is a potting, uh, potting bench. And this is a great segue into the value of these particular display pieces because what ends up happening is you, you find that customers, store associates, wine stewards, grocery managers, uh, tend to really want to keep these display pieces. And this is where, again, we're going to start to approach the concept of the Tide House Laws because this does get into some gray area. Because what ends up happening is these Tide House Laws are in place to really curb the uh, tendency to work with just one distributor exclusively. Going back to some of the concepts we picked up on or concepts, I should say, that we identified early on that bootlegging was really at the core of this distribution network and was uh, what was happening back then was this um, incentivizing of just working with one particular entity. And we see that kind of rear its head again when it comes to these POS displays. Uh, a lot of times people like to collect this stuff. So again, this leg lamp coming from the, the Christmas story movie, you will often, you know, if hear people, you know, ask, oh, I'll, I'll put your display up. You know, I'll, I'll buy all 50 cases if I can take that lamp home at the end of the day or at the end of, you know, the season or whatever. And that is illegal. <laughs> these technically belong to the distributor. And after the holidays, all of these display pieces need to find their way back to the distributor who, in theory, gives them back to the winery and they stay with with the distributor or the winery. And that is what keeps Tide House laws in compliance but again, this, this becomes very gray, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. So just looking at more POS pieces, again, just kind of identifying the, the, all of the, just this huge spectrum of creativity you see. Um, you know, it can be something like a cardboard cutout. I mean, some, they, there's varying degrees of efficacy with all of these different styles. Um, you know, you again, going back to these racks, uh, what you see here is... Um, I'll take a moment to address this. This specifically is referred to as a cross merchandising display because you are incorporating stemware or you're incorporating another item, essentially. In this case, it tends to be stemware, but uh, you're, you're putting that uh, with the wine in the hopes that uh, you're going to increase sales of both items by just displaying them uh, together. That not only is someone going to buy the wine, they're going to say, oh, I need those two glasses too. And they're going to impulsively buy both. So some display pieces are built with that in mind. Again, just a standard floor rack here. 
And now um, we're going to get it. We're going to really get into the Tide House laws here. So what we have here again are these display pieces that people tend to really get excited about. So this is a New Belgium Brewery. They make Fat Tire beer, Fat Tire amber, and so this is a logoed bike. This is a Schwinn bike, and if you were able to, you would see that it's been branded with with New Belgium's logo on, on it. People really want these pieces. People get very excited when they see their favorite beer or wine or spirits manufacturer um, just put these these logo pieces on display in a store. Um, you know, Bud Anheuser Busch being one of the oldest breweries in America, love them or hate them, they really have a long history and people get excited. You know, they'll they want the giant horse. They want to take the giant horse home. So. Things like this, uh, again, really circling back to that, I, that idea of tied house laws. So the way it works is these pieces, these display pieces, they come from the winery. The winery gives them to the distributor. The distributor then uses them as a way to make more impactful displays in retail establishments. And they are able to use them legally to incentivize uh, store uh, store level buyers to, to put these displays in action, or put them up in the store knowing full well that these display pieces, again, when the the, the uh, display is depleted and you've moved on to something else, that these display pieces go on the truck and get shipped back to the distributorship and the distributor either holds on to them or ships them back to the winery. They are on loan, essentially. So that is the way that Tide House laws uh, need to operate to stay compliant. Again, this is not something that can be used to um, overly incentivize a display. So you, a, a sales rep can't say to a, a buyer, I'll give you this bike if you put up 300 cases of fat tire six packs, you can keep it. That is where things get gray. That does happen. I, I will very upfront say that, that that happens all of the time, which is why it is a gray area. But again, we are speaking in terms of how to stay compliant. And that is, uh, that's what you would want to do is not do that, if that makes sense. Okay, moving on from there, just addressing the topic of what is known as shelf POS or shelf talkers. And these are really just wine tasting notes. Um, again, I we, we looked at them being taped to the back of a um, like a chopstick and or a skewer and stuck inside of a display. You also see them taped up to the shelf itself. And uh, these are just accolades again, or they are just uh, descriptors to help a customer make a purchase. This is a form of POS. And a lot of times distributors will supply a retailer with no, with what's known as a POS kit. And a POS kit would come with several different forms of POS. You would maybe get a couple display racks, you would get a series of shelf talkers, maybe uh, some some additional elements might be included, but uh, this is typically part of a uh, well-rounded POS kit. And the last form of POS we're going to look at is, um, is some logoed uh, logoed merchandise, and this tends to be very popular, especially we've been looking a lot at off-premise. We look at on-premise. We look at restaurants, grocery stores, bars, I'm sorry, restaurants, bars, uh, and, and the like. Really, this is where these these items really, um, really become very, uh, very popular. So you get the logoed pint glasses, logoed stemware. Um, these are you know, hats and co coasters, that that's a form of POS, the logoed coasters. And again, these are items that come from a brewery in this particular instance. They're given to the distributor. The distributor then um, distributes them to their accounts in hopes of just generating sales, brand visibility, uh, and, uh, and what have you. So again, very, very effective. People love this stuff. So t-shirts, wine openers, etched stemware, hats, posters, keychains, sweatshirts, coasters, wine crates, candles, sunglasses, wine stoppers, wine aerators, insulated uh, wine bags, reusable grocery bags, uh, luggage, label art, jewelry, cork art, aprons, pot holders, cooking utensils, anything with a winery or brewery logo on it tends to go over very, very well. Beer neons. We didn't mention that. Beer neons are an item that are of particular... Um, 
relevance in, in this way because a lot of sports bars in particular really like having those those uh, logoed neons hanging up in, in uh, their establishments. Those come from distributors. So just making note of that. And that is our last slide. So that's where we're going to end it for today. Hopefully you guys all have a good understanding of what POS is and a little more clear understanding of how Tide House laws play into the distribution of POS material. So I'm going to end it right there and we'll see you next week.